My name is Violet, and today I'm, I'm going to be speaking about um, social media. So 14 years ago, Mark Zuckerberg created a website now known as Facebook. His original intentions of the website was to give the people the power to share and make the world more open and connected. Since this was released, many other sites have been created very similar to it, names like Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and they've become very popular in our culture now today. And I would definitely agree that these sites can be great for communicating with your friends and family when, say, they live farther away, or, and the convenience of communicating with people from all over the world is really great, is a really great advancement in our technology nowadays. But today I'm going to argue that the cons of social media can outweigh the pros. And social media can be damaging to our overall well-being. The ways that it can do more harm than good is, one, it can negatively affect our self-esteem. Two, it tends to dominate our attention throughout the day. And three, it, it can affect our sleep schedule. For my first point, as with self-esteem, seeing pictures every day, seeing pictures of your friends every day, whether they're um, out at the beach, out at parties, well, you could be just sitting in classroom trying to pass the time, can cause some comparisons, which, since people tend to put on a to sort of facade online, since they're allowed, they can be whoever they want, it can, compared to the average life, it can make your life be, seem a little more dull when you're just going out about with your normal day. And um, with this, it's also very common to see people photoshopped and using filters, whether it's just their, the puppy filter on Snapchat or whether it's a full-on restructuring of someone's face. And, a lot of people are comparing themselves to these people with their filters and their photoshops to people who don't even look like the pictures they post. For example, um, Kardashians are well-known social media influencers and everyone kind of knows that they had surgeries, do photoshopping, but a lot of, that they tend to claim that they got this, their bodies through these things called waist trainers, which are essentially like corsets that you're supposed to use while exercising. And a lot of these girls saw um, them advertising them through Instagram and bought them for themselves to, in order to look similar. But um, there are many doctors, uh, one particular doctor in Atlanta, Dr. Taz, st 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 states that these products can cause, well, can worsen indigestion, can cause fainting while working out, and potentially shift around internal organs. So they're putting their health at risk in order to look like what they see online. And the second thing, our attention. Usually the first thing people tend to do when they wake up in the morning is check their phone. And it's typically the last thing they do before they go to bed. On average, a person will spend about, two, well this is typically teenagers, two hours a day on social media, which translates to about 30 days a year, which is a lot of time that people use where you're not typically doing anything productive, you could be procrastinating, you're not seeing, you're not having the most positive influences, there's often, you're bombarded with bad news, and um, like I, I said, just established, the images can be harmful for your self-esteem. And for example, if you've ever been out with one of your friends and they pull out their phones while you're trying to have a conversation with them, this can cause sort of a disconnect between you and your friends with the, per the person sitting right in front of you kind of paying more attention to their whatever's on their social media than, than what's going on in the world right around them, which can be potentially dangerous and probably not make your friend feel the best. And so this shows that these sites can really grab our attention a lot more than a lot of things in your real life. And this is not just this situation. We can often use these sites when we're in class and we're supposed to be learning something important. Or if we have something important to do, well, we decide to use it as a procrastination device. And the fact that we use these so much is, it's bound to affect our sleeping habits. 
a lot of people spend, sorry, people spend a lot of time on their phone before bed, which can often delay sleep. I know personally, I have before bed, laid down, checked the Snapchat, checked everyone's stories, go back to check everyone's, everyone's social media, and before I know it, it's 3 a.m. I haven't got any sleep. And I'm sure this is really common. A study for the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism found that typically any form of artificial light can suppress melatonin, which is a hormone that aids in your sleep. So not just from, so the light emitting off your phone when you're looking at it at night can actually make it more significantly difficult for, it, for you to sleep. And obviously this is a big problem when it comes to just going throughout your day the next day. And another study in the University of Pittsburgh of about 1,700 subjects found a strong association with those who, const who were constant checkers of their social media throughout the day and those who had reported a lot of sleep disturbances. Um, and with these poor sleep habits, you can have many health problems like lack of alertness, lack of ability, fatigue, and in the long term they can, can ca cause a greater risk for disease. So this is a habit that's not really beneficial to most people because it can cause bad self-esteem, comparison, uh, distractions, and bad sleep cycles. So it's a habit that I think many people should break. That's all I have. All right, Violet, the uh, social media, uh, you know, and the experience of Facebook, I think, is a nice attention device. Then you mentioned all the other uh, sites that have been developed over the years, suggesting, you know, that this is kind of a growing issue. I think that makes sense. Your propositional statement uh, says that it's, uh, the harms are greater than whatever advantages that we get. And then you've kind of got a second way of stating the same thing. It's like you're paraphrasing the proposition a little bit, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But uh, I think you could probably do that at the end of the speech instead of trying to do it immediately after you present your first uh, proposition. There's a good preview of what the secondary points are going to be, so that's fine. And you signpost those points internally very clearly so it's easy to follow. So I know where you're going at the beginning, and then I know where I am at any point during the presentation. That part, I think, is pretty solid. The self-esteem issue, I think, is a little bit problematic because you're mostly dependent on hypotheticals here uh, and uh, ideas about how people might compare themselves. And I think that uh, you need some research. I think you need more than just the hypotheticals. Uh, you know, I, you know, sure, I might look at my friend's stuff, that what they're doing, and say, gee, I wish I was doing that instead of uh, being at work or something like that. But I'm not exactly sure that that's affecting my self-esteem. That just is uh, distracting me. I think you got a better argument about distraction there than you have about self-esteem here. And then you mentioned, you know, the Photoshop thing and uh, the issue comes up concerning the Kardashians. That's your one example that you have on this point. And it's a little uh, generic, this I tell you what, if you could tell me how many of these products got sold and uh, how many people are using them, I'd feel a little bit more confident to suggest that the social media is, in fact, having these particular impact. Although maybe people just buy them because they're endorsed by the Kardashians, not because they are comparing themselves to the Kardashians on Facebook or Instagram or wherever the heck it is that the Kardashians happen to be living at this time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's rather got something to do with the way they... Um, you know, it's a product that they just sold. It's got, you know, their motivation is I want to be like Kim, not, not because they see the picture, but because they think that there's a real argument for that. I did think that the idea that there's a potential harm from that was also a good point to show that there is, in fact, an unbalanced negative consequence. That I thought was uh, 
pretty good. It could be developed a little bit more, but like I said, that's the only example that you've got. Um, the uh, second point uh, is talking about our, distracting our attention. We're checking our phones before we go to bed. We check them when we get up. Uh, I, I think people understand that they are a little obsessive about those things, but that doesn't necessarily show that that's a harm. Uh, I do think the idea of, uh, there's a term for it, I forget what it is, where you are in the presence of somebody else but really ignoring them to pay attention to somebody who's not really there, uh, that that is in fact likely to cause some problem or friction in your relationship, unless of course they're doing the exact same thing, which seems like what a lot of people are doing nowadays. So there's not really much information on this other than the description that you've given, and while I might find it infuriating, that doesn't necessarily make it uh, something that is true. I would still need to be able to make an argument about it. I might want to believe it myself, but I'm going to convince others people I got to find some proof for it the argument that you had the best evidence on is the third point about the sleep habits and you give a, a piece of information about the light from the devices you talk about how much time people focus on this and the relationship to potential sleep problems and you cite the sources on that pretty effectively so the first two points a little too dependent on uh, you know either hypothetical examples or a singular example the third point the evidence is a little bit stronger uh, I think you need a little bit more summary. You need to have a better eye contact at the end. And uh, you do have the uh, porky pig exit that I kind of warn people about. So let's, let's just come back to your proposition. That's a better way to finish. Thank you.